Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 32 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about creating and calling multi-statement table valued functions. And finally, we'll also look at the differences between inline and multi-statement table valued functions. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 30 and 31 of this video series. Multi-statement table valued functions are very much similar to inline table valued functions with a very few differences between them. First, let's look at an example of creating an inline and multi-statement table valued functions and then we'll find the differences between them. I have this employee table which has got ID, name, date of birth, gender and department ID columns. Now what we want to do is we want to create an inline and multi-statement table valued functions which give us the same output that you can see on the right hand side. I just want the ID, name and date of birth. Okay, so now to do that we are creating an inline table valued function here and we have spoken about inline table valued functions extensively in part 31 of this video series. Okay, um, so to create this function, we have used create function and then function name returns table. Okay, because we know that a function can take parameters and it should return a value. Okay, so this function is not taking any parameters and it's returning a table. And then we have this as keyword return whatever is the select statement returning. Here the select statement is selecting ID, name, and date of birth, typecasted as date from TBL employees table. So whatever this select statement is retrieving from TBL employees table that is being returned by this function. Okay, so this is an inline table valued function. And if you look at the inline table valued function, after returns you have only the table keyword you're not specifying the structure of the table that gets returned from this inline table valued function. And another thing to note here is that this function fniltv underscore get employees this function doesn't have a begin and end clause okay now let's look at the multi statement table valued function okay so whether if it is inline table valued function or scalar function or multi statement table valued function you always use create function statement to create a function so create function and then the name of the function here fn underscore multi statement table valued function underscore get employees mstvf stands for multi statement table valued function okay underscore get employees and then i'm saying returns at table so i'm creating a table variable here okay so at table is the name of the variable and its data type is table and obviously if you are creating a table variable a table variable has to have you know the column names and the data types so that's what we are creating here in the bracket okay when we are creating a table you will specify the name of the column and its data type similarly you know for a multi statement table valued function you are saying okay i am returning a table with this structure which has got id name and date of birth okay so that's one of the primary difference between inline table valued function and multi statement table valued function in inline table valued function you don't specify the structure of the table but in multi statement table valued function you do specify the structure of the table okay and then as and then you have this begin and end block but if you look at the inline table valued function you don't have that block okay and within that begin and end block you have the body of the function okay so what are you doing here here you are inserting data into this table variable you're saying insert into this table variable okay so what do you want to insert into this table variable you want to insert the ID name and date of birth typecasted as date from the employees table so you are retrieving all these records you know from employees tables you're basically retrieving ID name and date of birth columns and then inserting those rows into this at table variable. If you look at the at table variable, it has got ID name and date of birth columns. Okay. Now if you look at date of birth here in this table, it's a date and time column. But here it's just a date column. So that's the reason why I'm typecasting this date of birth to be of type. And not only that, if you look at the output, I just want the date. I don't want the time part of it. So that's why I'm just typecasting it to date type, which will truncate that time part and just give me the date. Okay, so you're inserting that into this table. And finally, you're saying return. So when, when this function encounters this return keyword, what's going to happen, this function will return this table. 
So whatever you have inserted into this at table variable gets returned to the caller. Whoever calls your function, he will get the data that is present in this table. Okay, so if you look at the differences, you know, the differences are very simple to understand. In inline table valued function, you don't specify the structure of the table. You just say it returns a table. And the structure of the table that gets returned for an inline table valued function is determined by the select statement that you have there. Okay, so if you look at the multi statement table valued function, you do define the structure for the table. And then Inline and other differences, inline table valued function cannot have a begin and end block, whereas a multi statement table valued function can have a begin and end block. Okay. Now before we continue to the you know other other differences between these two functions, let's quickly create these functions and then see how to call them. So to create an inline function, look at this, this is exactly what we have seen on the slide. Create function, function name, returns table as return whatever this query returns. Look at this. Basically, this query selects this data, ID, name, date of birth. Okay, So return this data from this function. That's what we are exactly saying here. So let's execute this function. I mean, create this function. So the function got created. So you go into that database, programmability folder, functions. And since this is a table valued, inline table valued function, you look for that in the table valued functions folder, refresh that, you should see the function that we have just created. And obviously, to call this function, you will say select star from that function name. So what's that function name? fn underscore iltv underscore get employee. So when I press F5, I get the result back as expected. And along the same lines, if I want to create a multi-statement table valued function, you use the create function, create function, function name returns a table variable which has got this structure. And you are saying this variable is of type table and then as begin and end blocks within that you are saying okay into this table variable insert ID name and date of birth from TBL employees. So this table has the rows that are present in TBL employees but only ID name and date of birth columns and finally you are saying return which will return this table variable back to the caller. So let's create this function and obviously to select data from this function you will say select star from inline table valued functions and multi statement table valued functions both of them will be in this table valued functions folder so this is our multi statement table valued functions let's drag and drop it and both i mean to call an inline table valued function or a multi statement table valued function you use the same syntax select star from the function name select star from the function name so let's press F5 and you should see the output there. Okay, so we have seen how to create and call an inline table valued function and a multi statement table valued function. Now let's find out the differences between them. Okay, uh, we have already seen a few of the differences. In an inline table valued function, the returns class cannot contain the structure of the table the function is going to return. Whereas with multi statement table valued function, we specify the structure of the table that gets returned. We have seen that. Inline table valued function cannot have begin and end block, whereas the multi statement table valued function can have that. Inline table valued functions, this is important. Okay. Now if you look at what we have done just now in the previous slide, you know, this output that I want to achieve I can achieve that both with an inline table valued function as well as a multi statement table valued function. So when you have two choices to do the same work, I would always prefer an inline table valued function over multi statement table valued function because of the performance gain, you know, that I get when I use inline table valued functions. So inline table valued functions are better for performance than multi statement table valued functions. So if the given task can be achieved using both, then always prefer inline table valued functions. And the reason for improved performance and inline table valued function is because internally SQL, or SQL Server treats an inline table valued function much like it would a view. Okay, whereas a multi statement table valued function, you know, is treated similar like it would a stored procedure. 
that's why inline table valued functions are better for performance reasons okay another difference between an inline table valued function and multi statement table valued function is that it's possible to un update the underlying table using an inline table valued function but it's not possible with multi statement table valued function let's understand what we mean by this now if you look at this inline table valued function this function is actually getting its data from the employees table so for this function, the underlying table is nothing but the employee's table. Now, look at this. To retrieve the data from this function, I am calling it as if it is a table. So I'm saying select star from this function. You know, I'm, we are almost treating it like a table. Okay. Now, if when I call this function, this function actually executes the statement and returns that data back to me. And and this statement is being executed on TBL employees table. So for this function, this employees table is the underlying table. Now, I'm able to retrieve the data from TBL employees table through this function. Now, is it possible to edit and update the data through this function? Absolutely, you can do that using an inline function. Let's do that and see what happens. So I'm saying update this function. Okay, update this function set you know I want to set Sam's name from Sam 1 to maybe Sam set name is equal to Sam where Sam's ID is 1 so let's say ID is equal to 1 and see if it updates that so when I execute this let's see what happens now look at this it says one row affected which means that row got updated so now let's say select star from the table and you see that Sam has been updated to Sam 1 has been updated to Sam as expected now let's try to do the same thing if you look at this you have this multi statement table value function now when I try to retrieve data from that obviously I get the output you know the same output but can I issue an update statement against this sta against this function and uh, update the underlying table? It's not possible. Okay, but let's try to do that and see what happens. Okay, instead of rewriting the query, let's copy this same query and change the name of the function. So instead of updating the inline table valued function, we want to update the multi statement table valued function. So let's do that and see what's going to happen. So I want to update Sam to maybe Sam1. I press F5, look at this. Object, you know, function, multi-statement, table valued function, get employees cannot be modified. And it makes sense why, if you look at the implementation of the multi-statement table valued function, this function is not directly getting its data from TBL employees. I mean, it's getting from TBL employees, but then, it, it is being inserted into this table variable and that table variable is getting you know returned back to the caller okay so for that reason you know in a multi statement table valued function as you can have many intermediate processing steps there you don't really know which column is coming from which table and and from which you know variable we are finally returning the data back so there will be many intermediate processing steps there and it doesn't really make sense in allowing to update the underlying tables using the multi statement table valued functions and that's the reason why SQL Server doesn't allow us to do that okay so that's another difference between multi statement table valued function and inline table valued function on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. 